Hello my friends, I welcome you again from San Francisco. Today is the middle of November and we are going to an unusual place. Our walk will be to the U.S. National Cemetery. Because of its name and location, it is often confused with the Golden Gate National Cemetery. Located a few miles south of the city, around 1937, San Francisco residents voted to no longer build cemeteries in the city itself. And as a result, a site was chosen for a new national cemetery south of the city limits. The cemetery is one of four officially existing within the city. Of San Francisco, the others are the San Francisco Columbarium, the historic cemetery next to the Dolores Mission, and the sarcophagus of Thomas Starr King. When Spain colonized what would become California, this area was selected as the site for a fort, or Presidio, to defend San Francisco Bay. About 40 families traveled here from northern Mexico in 1776 and built the first settlement, a small quadrangle only a few hundred feet west of what is now Funston Avenue. Mexico controlled the Presidio following 1821, but the fort became less important to the Mexican government. In 1835, most soldiers and their families moved north to Sonoma, leaving it nearly abandoned. During the Mexican-American War, U.S. troops occupied and repaired the damage to the fort, an image showing the entrance of the San Francisco National Cemetery mid-century discovery. Of gold in California led to the sudden growth and importance of San Francisco and prompted the U.S. government to establish a military reservation here by executive order. President Millard Fillmore established the Presidio for military use in November 1850. During the 1850s and 1860s, Presidio-based soldiers fought Native Americans in California, Oregon, Washington, and Nevada. The outbreak of the American Civil War in 1861 re-emphasized the importance of California's riches and the military significance of San Francisco's harbor to the Union. This led, in 1862, to the first major construction and expansion program at the Presidio since its acquisition by the United States. The Indian Wars of the 1870s and 1880s resulted in additional expansion of the Presidio, including large-scale tree planting and a post-beautification program. By the following decade, the Presidio had shed its frontier outpost appearance and was elevated to a major military installation and base for American expansion into the Pacific. In 1890, with the creation of Sequoia, General Grant, and Yosemite National Parks in the Sierra Nevada Mountains of California, the protection of these scenic and natural resources was assigned to the U.S. Cavalry stationed at the Presidio. Soldiers patrolled these parks during summer months until the start of World War I in 1914. The Spanish-American War in 1898 and subsequent Philippine-American War from 1899 to 1902 increased the role of the Presidio. Thousands of troops camped in tent cities while awaiting shipment to the Philippines. Returning sick and wounded soldiers were treated in the Army's first permanent hospital, later renamed Letterman Army General Hospital. In 1914, troops under the command of General John Pershing departed the Presidio for the Mexican border. 
in pursuit of Pancho Villa and his men. When the United States entered World War II after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Presidio soldiers dug foxholes along nearby beaches. Fourth Army Commander Gen. John L. DeWitt conducted the internment of thousands of Japanese and Japanese Americans. On the West Coast, while U.S. soldiers of Japanese descent were trained to read and speak Japanese at the first military intelligence service language school organized at Chrissy Field. During the 1950s, the Presidio served as the headquarters for the Nike Missile Defense Program and headquarters for the U.S. Sixth Army, the Presidio of San Francisco, encompassing more than 350 buildings with historic value, was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1962. In 1989, the Presidio closed as a military entity and was transferred to the National Park Service. In October 1994, on December 12, 1884, the War Department designated Nine Acres 3, 6 hectares, including the site of the Old Post Cemetery, as San Francisco National Cemetery. It was the first national cemetery established on the West Coast and marks the growth and development of a system of national cemeteries extending beyond the battlefields of the Civil War. Initial interments included the remains of the dead from the former Post Cemetery as well as individuals removed from cemeteries at abandoned forts and camps elsewhere along the Pacific coast and western frontier. In 1934, all unknown remains in the cemetery were disinterred and reinterred in one plot. Many soldiers and sailors who died overseas serving in the Philippines, China, and other areas of the Pacific theater are interred in San Francisco National Cemetery. There are also three British Commonwealth Service war graves here a Canadian soldier of World War I and a Royal Navy and Merchant Navy sailor of World War II. One, the cemetery is enclosed with a stone wall and slopes down a hill that today frames a view of the Golden Gate Bridge. Its original ornamental cast iron entrance gates are present but have been unused since the entrance was relocated. Tall eucalyptus trees further enclose the cemetery. The lodge and rostrum date to the 1920s and reflect the Spanish revival styling introduced to several western cemeteries. Many Military Medal of Honor recipients are buried in the cemetery. This is the highest military award of the United States Armed Forces, which is awarded in recognition of the merits of American soldiers, sailors, Marines, pilots, guards and coast guards who distinguish themselves by valiant deeds. The medal is usually presented by the President of the United States, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and is presented on behalf of the United States Congress. 1st Sergeant William Allen Indian Campaigns, 1st Company, 23rd U.S. Infantry, Mount Turret, Arizona, March 27, 1873. Assistant Chief Engineer William Butters of the Navy. At sea after the sinking of the American destroyer Squalus, May 13, 1939. Major James Cowie's Civil War, 147th New York Infantry Regiment, Hatcher's Run, the February 6, 1865. Sergeant James Congdon served under the name James Madison Civil War, Company E, 8th New York Cavalry, Waynesboro, Virginia, March 2, 1865. Second Lieutenant Matthias W. Day Indian Campaigns, 9th U.S. Cavalry, Los Animas Canyon, New York, September 18, 1879. Major General William F. Dean Participant of the Korean War of the U.S. Army, Commander of the 24th Infantry Division, Dejian, Korea, July 20th to 21st, 1950. Colonel Kern W. Danigan, participant in the Vietnam War of the U.S. Army, Company A, 1st Battalion of the 46th Infantry Division of the United States, Republic of Vietnam, May 13, 1969.
Colonel Frederick Funston, Senior Philippine American War, 20th Kansas Volunteer Infantry Division, Rio Grande de la Pampanga, Luzon, Philippine Islands, April 27, 1899. Corporal Ruben Jasper Phillips, Boxer Rebellion, U.S. Marine Corps, China, June 1900. First Lieutenant William Rufus Shafter, Civil War, First Company of the 7th Michigan Infantry, Fair Oaks, Virginia, May 31, 1862. And this is not a complete list of U.S. heroes buried at the National Cemetery in San Francisco. Two unusual interments at San Francisco National Cemetery are Major Pauline Cushman and Sarah of Bowman. Cushman's headstone bears the inscription Pauline C. Fryer, Union Spy, but her real name was Harriet Wood, born in the 1830s. She became a performer in Thomas Placid's show varieties and took the name Pauline Cushman. She married theater musician Charles Dickinson in 1853, but after her husband died of illness related to his service for Union forces, she returned to the stage. During spring 1863, while performing in Louisville, Kentucky, she was asked by the provost marshal to gather information regarding local Confederate activity. From there, she was sent to Nashville, where she had some success conveying information about troop strength and movements. In Nashville, she was also captured and nearly hanged as a spy. She returned to the stage in 1864 to lecture and sell her autobiography, Entertainer P.T. Barnum promoted her as the spy of the Cumberland and through Barnum's practice boostership, she quickly gained fleeting fame. After spending the 1870s working the Redwood logging camps, she remarried and moved to the Arizona Territory. By 1893, she was divorced. Destitute and desperate, she applied for her first husband's military pension and returned to San Francisco, where she died from an overdose of narcotics allegedly taken to soothe her rheumatism. Members of the Grand Army of the Republic and Women's Relief Corps conducted a magnificent funeral for the former spy. Major Cushman's remains reside in officer circle. Also buried at San Francisco National Cemetery is Sarah Bowman, also known as Great Western, a formidable woman over six feet one, eight meters tall with red hair and a fondness for wearing pistols. Married to a soldier, she traveled with Zachary Taylor's troops in the Mexican-American War helping to care for the wounded, for which she earned a government pension. After her husband's death, she had a variety of male companions and ran an infamous tavern and brothel in El Paso, Texas. Bowman left El Paso when she married her last husband. The two ended up at Fort Yuma, where she operated a boarding house until her death from a spider bite in 1866. She was given a full military funeral and was buried in the Fort Yuma Cemetery. Several years later, her body was exhumed and reburied at San Francisco National Cemetery. San Francisco National Cemetery is also the burial location of Brigadier General George G. Gatley, who commanded brigades and divisions in World War I, and was also well known as the father of actress and Harding. To another World War I Brigadier General, Otis Creamer Horney is also buried at San Francisco National Cemetery. Three U.S. Representatives Philip Burton and Sala Burton are also buried in the cemetery. Located just outside the gates to San Francisco National Cemetery, the Korean War Memorial pays tribute to the million Koreans and 50, zero Americans who died in this hitherto unresolved conflict. The newest Presidio Memorial in honor of those who served and sacrificed themselves in the Army. This war memorial was built in 2016 with the support of the Korean War Memorial Fund and the Presidio Trust. Thank you.
That's it for today. Our walk has come to an end. I hope you were interested. Until new meetings on the channel, a trip to San Francisco. Be healthy.